At the rainy day homestead blues. <laughs> oh, is that? Did I look sad enough? Try to do it again. Okay. Got the rainy day homestead blues. I feel like one of those commercials for like depression medication. That's not a joke. Nothing to laugh about. Today we're going to talk about uh, a fun rainy day project that you can do and one that I really encourage doing if you are feeling super worried about, you know, COVID-19 and food running out at the grocery store. We got a really cool homestead project. Everybody can do this. You can do this. If you're at home right now and you're kind of a little bit worried about this virus and maybe you are laid off from work or you're working from home and so you have a little bit more time on your hands and you're wishing like, oh man, I wish I had a homestead and I was producing a lot of food. I feel so much better right now. Guess what? You can do these projects we're about to start. We are gonna start sprouting some sprouts we're also going to be starting a hydroponic garden and these are things you can do inside in any spare room. We're going to be setting it up in our sunroom here, but you don't need a sunroom. You can use grow lights, you can use a windowsill. Sprouts actually do better without direct sunlight. So follow along, kind of, you know, hashtag sprout with us. We're going to be starting this and the cool thing about this is you're going to be able to see this every day. In a week's time, you could have fresh greens growing from your homestead, whether that homestead is a 100 acre homestead in the hills somewhere or an apartment building and you just have a little apartment. Uh, that's your homestead, you can start growing. This is an area that's been a big hole in our homestead. While we have been growing our own meat and growing our own milk and at a time like this with this weird virus going around, we're really happy to have our own meat in the freezer and actually more continuously growing out back. We have eggs that are growing and that's really great. And we have milk, which is awesome. We don't have anything, vegetables, that's always been a hole in our homestead. We've never been great with the plants. And right now, if the local grocery store shuts down or if all the vegetables are just hard to get, we would be in trouble. We wouldn't have any real greenery and a diet that's all milk and meat. Sounds delicious, but there would be some negative side effects to that. So we're gonna start filling a hole in our homestead. And those of you out there who maybe are growing your own meat but not greens, this is a way to get started. And those of you out there who have nothing growing and you're home and you're a little bit worried, this is an area to turn your attention to. Stop listening to the news all day that's got you scared about this virus. Start growing some of your own food. It's gonna make you feel better. You're gonna have a little bit more control over your life that way. And you're gonna be able to feed your family something and this can grow. This actually could turn into food for livestock. You could start sprouting and then feed bunnies what you're sprouting. And now you have meat and greens. So let's get it started. It's very simple to start. We're just gonna be doing some, um, right now we're just gonna be soaking some things. So day one is just soak. So let's start soaking. So zoom out again. Yep. Oh, that's warm. <laughs> How do you even lay on that? <laughs> we are in our sunroom and this is a great location. My mother-in-law, one of the things she misses most of the house, if you haven't been following our story long, we moved into the house that Kay grew up in and my mother-in-law and father-in-law, they just moved out of here, what, last year? Yeah. One of the things she misses the most about this place is this room for starting seeds. Two reasons, you have natural sunlight. It's actually a, a glass ceiling here, so you get all day long good sun. It's like a glass building. Sun. It is like a glass building. Like a glass apartment. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. the glass elevator. Uh, the other cool thing about this room is there are radiators, as they say in Pennsylvania. And they heat. Or radiators, as we say in Connecticut. Uh, the radiator, when in Rome, my father-in-law, who's a welding metal fabricator, built these flat tops for them. So you can actually sit, you're laying on it right now, you can I'm sit on these. Up. When the kids come out in the morning and get dressed to go outside, they sit on these and they warm themselves up. <laughs> 
But for starting plants, this is incredible. You have a warm source right underneath them, so you give them a good boost. So you get natural sunlight and heat. So for us, this is a perfect room to start our plants for our hydroponic garden that we're gonna be working on. So we're gonna start some hydroponic plants, day one of Sprout With Me, this new series we're gonna do. And, yeah. and just as we get into this, day one, we are very new to hydroponics. We had an aquaponic system a long time ago, but we didn't get very far with it. we still have two fish from it. We still have the fish from the aquaponic system. We should go two show them. Two of them. We'll show the fish. They survived all the way from they Connecticut to here. They survived the move. It's been, uh, those fish are like part of the farm now. <laughs> we haven't named them, have we? Remember, we were thinking of Pac-Man names, though. All this time, like two years, we haven't named those poor they fish. They don't have names. We just call them the goldfish or the fish. So this is more of a learning experience for us, uh, but we'd like to encourage you to learn along with us grow some plants inside, indoors, have something that's sustainable in your homestead, whether that's a big farm or a little apartment. So we're gonna, today, we're gonna soak our sprouts. The first step to sprouts is soaking them overnight. And we're gonna soak our, ooh, yeah, don't do that. We're gonna soak our, what is this stuff called? Starter? Rock wool. Rock wool. So this is rock wool. Rock, rock wool is a growing medium for hydroponics that yeah, we haven't even talked about. Sprouts and hydroponics, what are these two things? Yeah. Sprouts are little tiny seeds that grow basically just off of moisture. You don't put them in dirt, you get the seed to sprout and then you eat those. So you can make a little salad out of sprouts, you can juice them, you can do all sorts of things, but they're really rich in nutrients, high nutrients. So a good thing to grow if you're bugging in, if you're eating a bunch of you know, shelf-stable foods because you don't want to go to the supermarket because there's a weird virus going around, sprouts are loaded with nutrients. So while you can eat rice and beans all day and you know maybe your freezer's full of some venison or some farm fresh chicken or something, you want to make sure you're still getting all those nutrients and sprouts are a good source for that. So sprouts, we're going to be putting them in a jar and growing them in a jar, real simple. Where are the herbs? Where are these spices? There is no flavor. <laughs> hydroponics is a little bit different than sprouting. Hydroponics is growing plants in water and you're adding nutrients to the water. That way the plant actually can grow. You're not growing it in soil. One of the benefits of sprouts and hydroponics versus growing a garden in the dirt, like our raised beds that you see on the other side of this window, is the speed in which you can actually harvest. We can get done sprouts in a week. We can be eating these sprouts in less than a week. And hydroponics, we can have hydroponic, hydroponics in 30 days we can be eating from our hydroponic system. So, you know, if you feel a little bit unprepared right now, if food at the supermarket is flying off the shelves and you're wishing you had something started but it feels like too late to start a homestead, don't wait. Sprout with me. We'll have links below to all the supplies that we're using, everything you need to get started. Sprout along with us. Get something going. Don't sit around and just feel like, oh, I missed the boat on this one. Just start something and uh, keep growing because eventually this weird virus will go away, but you'll still be growing food. What are you doing? Yeah, I did. Okay, so we have to do two things today. He's like stuck to the Here. Hey, there we go. Yay. Okay. okay, so this, okay, there you go. We take our rock wool and we put it in our little plastic one? guy. Yeah, you can do one too. Although I don't know if we're gonna soak both at the same time because this is a lot of food here. So maybe we'll Save hold that. off on that a little bit. And we'll just soak this one for today. I got my knife in my oven. Oh, look at that. That's a proud dad. His daughter's got his, her knife when he doesn't have his. There you go. That's okay. I have a knife in that too, if you need. Oh, that's right. This one's actually got the knife. There you go. The rock wool, it was suggested it to feel us. It doesn't like rocks at all. It doesn't feel like rocks. No, it doesn't. And this is that's a growing. <laughs> This is called a growing medium. Basically, a seed needs something 
to sit in while the roots go down into the water. So this is just rock wool, it's just a medium. People in different hydroponic systems, they'll use um, uh, lava rocks and uh, all kinds of other stuff. That For will us, burn your plants, lava rocks. <laughs> Not molten lava rocks. Oh God. That would be pretty bad. Yeah. This uh, is just a place, and all these little holes, you pop a seed in those little holes, and then it can start growing. But before, remember you remember we did this back yeah. at our old farm? Before we can start our seeds, it was suggested to us by the people at the hydroponic store near us, soak this because it's acidic. So we're gonna soak this overnight, and then tomorrow we can start planting seeds in it. So let's put this here. start our sprouts and our sprouts we need to soak overnight I got three different kind of sprouts from uh, you can get these on Amazon I'll have links below sprout house these are um, radish sprouting seeds and I don't know they don't put on the front of this one they don't put what a serving size is so I'm gonna have to google that what about this mung beans these mung beans, they say a serving size is one quarter cup, which is what you have right here. So let's do the mung beans for starters. Okay. So we're gonna open up our mung beans. I can get more. Okay. So mung bean more? sprouts have a crisp, crunchy texture and a flavor similar to fresh peas. That sounds delicious. Uh, they are a tasty addition to salads and Asian main dishes. This is cool, mung beans. Harvest in two to five days. What else can you harvest? in two days. So we're going to soak these for 12 hours, rinse and drain, spread them in a sprouting container, rinse and drain again. By the fourth or fifth day, they're ready to eat. So, ready? Hold that up, we're gonna pour it in to that guy. You should do a slow motion That's a good shot, pour. good idea. Leave the sprouts in between us so you can see the sprouts. 
Slide over, Let's right? Go. Yep, how's that? Can you see us? Sit up a little. You gotta sit up. A little more? There. That's good. We are done with day one sprout with me. Day one of Sprout With Me is just soaking. All you have to do, well really day one is ordering all your stuff, so you do that today. Links below for the stuff you need to do what we're doing. Uh, we're, just, we're just soaking stuff. We're soaking beans overnight. We're soaking our, our, claw, soaking our rock down. wool. Tomorrow we will be planting seeds into the rock wool. We will be rinsing twice to three times a day our sprouts. And we will show you that in the next Sprout With Me video which may come out tomorrow. I might do all these in a row, like seven Sprout With Me, but I probably, they'll be incorporated into our other stuff going on in the homestead too. So if you're gonna follow along, comment below how you'd like to see this series, Sprout With Me. Uh, would you like to see seven individual sprouting videos over the next couple weeks? Would you like to see every day, but that mixed in with our daily chores? Are you gonna sprout with us? Let us know, I wanna see in the comments below who's gonna sprout with us. Okay? How many people? And uh, we have to do a Homesteady Camel Train shout out before we go. Where's my phone? Okay, so all of them are soaking. We're gonna give you more instructions on that in a second, but first it's time for the Homesteady Camel Train. I can't yell in here, it'd be too loud with the echo. Shout out! <laughs> Today's Camel Train ticket is Samantha. From Clawfoot Farm in Washington. Washington State. This is like a perfect video for Samantha to be the Camel Train Shadow because she says they are a typical suburban family living our homesteady life through urban farming. Do you know what urban farming is? Uh, herb. <laughs> that was a good guess. <laughs> urban is where people, uh, the word urban is used to describe where people live more close together like in cities. So, like in town, one house, right. another house, another Or house. like in town. So what do you think urban farming is? Hmm. Neighbors farming? Both hmm. farming? Yeah, in town or in the city. And Clawfoot Farm, they are growing on a quarter acre lot. They're growing, what do you think you would grow on a quarter acre lot? So, <laughs> on like a small property, what livestock would you choose to grow? What livestock? Yeah, on a small property. Small property. What would you suggest? Definitely not goats. No, definitely not goats. Goats are a no for a small property. <laughs> They're escape masters. They are. What do you think you would? I would grow what Clawfoot Farm is growing. Rabbits. And chickens. We got rabbits we and do. chickens. You can grow them on a big property or a small property. Rabbits are awesome. We are loving our rabbits. They are, especially the babies. They we are so cute. We could feed them sprouts, you know. Maybe that'll help us get off the pellets. They, oh, wow. They grow 70% of all their food from their farm. And they say, we are really proud about it. Yeah, I would be too. I don't think we grow 70% of our food. No. We're, we're maybe 50. So they have a YouTube channel, let's take a look. So go click right there to check out their YouTube channel. Say hello, thank them for this video. It's staying on me. Tanner? It's a berry afternoon. Awesome. They are growing tons of food on that little quarter acre lot. How awesome is that? So go check out what they're doing on their urban farm and uh, thank them for this video because they are the sponsors for this video. Samantha, heads up, your uh, one of a kind camel train t-shirt is on its way. Please wear it in one of your YouTube videos. We'd love to see that. And uh, if you would like to join the Homesteady Camel Train, where do they click? Click right there. Right there. Click there to join the camel train. You will get your special t-shirt, your shout out on the show, and a lifetime membership to the Pioneer program. Join us for the live shows, watch the extended versions commercial free, all that good stuff and more. Join the camel train. Now, let's talk about the next steps. Sprout with me. Where do you go from here? Sprout with me. I like that. <laughs>
The last step for our sprouts is to cover them. Oh, we gotta cover them. And then put them in a place that doesn't get sunlight. So, we're gonna cover them with cloth. Let's go in here. Everything I've learned, that cloth should really be cheesecloth. You don't want like direct sunlight, but I'm sure a little bit of light would probably be good. Just guessing here. Just so guess. we're gonna get some more cheesecloth. We're all out of cheesecloth because we're using it with milking our camels right now. But uh, we'll get more cheesecloth and we will see how this goes. And that's the fun thing about Sprout With Me is we're gonna be learning things and trying new things and some will work. And seeing and if it experimenting. Yeah, the fun See, part. This stuff will work. Maybe it all blow up. Maybe the next day we'll find it alive. Among Maybe the giant monster. Will alive. <laughs> 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 You'll be going to get your morning golden milk. <laughs> 